Hello everyone and welcome back to Gage Hill Crafts. I'm Sarah. And I'm Rick. Today we're going to share a little bit about our trip down to Maryland last weekend for the Maryland Sheep and Wolf Festival. This is our second year at the event and we've had a great time uh, for both years. Uh, we left last Thursday a little caravan. We packed up the van, headed down, and for the second year in a row we were able to stay with our friends John and Erica and two, their two wonderful kids. And it just makes it such much more enjoyable experience. Yeah, it's like uh, staying... I thought I'd be so tired after talking to everybody for two days straight that I wouldn't want to sort of deal with any kind of social situation, but it's actually so much nicer to go hang out with, you know, a warm family atmosphere with people we know really well, um, rather than like a sterile hotel room. Agreed. I think so, Agreed. yeah. And it almost, you know, re-energizes you. It gets you to rest up more and stuff. So what were you, some of your uh, highlights from the show? Well, uh, my highlights were just the, the volume of people. This mm. year, more than last year, we seem to have a lot more people uh, shuffling by the booth, and there was a nice energy about the, the yarnies, as you so eloquently <laughs> refer to them as. And it was just a great deal of energy, lots of smiling faces, and that just made, brought out the energy in us as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and we had a new product this year that you had fun with. Oh, um, yes. <laughs> So tell people about that. Well, Sarah made these beautiful sheepskin shawls, and they are both fabulous and badass, I think, as Sarah liked to refer to it. So you put it on, and it looks both elegant. You could totally see somebody wearing that over a ballroom gal, uh, gown, mm -hmm. or you could see uh, people who may be reenactors or a Halloween costume or something and just putting on a scowl face and just mm -hmm. being seriously badass. Yeah, so we had quite a few people coming into our booth to play dress up, and that was a lot of fun. Um, people seem to really like those. I started making them, um, so we were vending with Vermont Natural Sheepskins, um, and uh, this is our big show, um, biggest show of the year is in May. It's a good timing because um, sometimes I, I'll run out of sheepskins around Christmas, um, but then I, ha I usually have another batch in January or February, so it's a good timing for us to uh, kind of reinvigorate our inventory and, and let people have another chance to get some some sheepskins, um, but this year I had a few that had holes or other problems with them, so that's why I decided to cut these up and make uh, shawls out of them. Well, yeah, it's one so of the things I speak. I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, it's one of the things I speak with people about. It is this. It's very important to us to celebrate the animal. Mm -hmm. So it feels horrible to just throw away this beautiful sheepskin with gorgeous fiber on it because somebody marked it up with paint, or there's a hole where the butcher may have gone through the skin. And it's just a really nice way to just kind of make use of the whole animal. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So um, some other highlights for me was that I got to see some meet and some new knitting friends, um, uh, including uh, Elizabeth Elliott. Um, I had long admired her designs um, and kind of by accident um, because I kept seeing things on Ravelry and going, ooh, that's really pretty, or oh, I should make this next, um, and not really realizing that they were all from this one person. Um, so Elizabeth Elliot, she's E. Elliot Designs, I think, or E. Elliot Knits. Um, I'll put a link to her in the show notes, um, but she's got a modern take on really classic pieces that you could make and keep in your wardrobe for a long time. Yeah, as a kind of you know, I'm not a knitter. I admire all the work that my wife and my mother-in-law uh, makes, but also along in our feed, at the on the Instagram feed. I love scrolling through that and seeing all the fabulous things that you all come up with. Um, but Elliot's, uh, excuse me, Elizabeth Elliot's things are just really caught me by surprise. I really took a second gander uh, at those designs because I just love the vibrancy of the colors and the and the angles and the geometry that she uses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. Um... And then we met Anne. Uh, Anne Choi. Yeah. yeah. That was really nice. A friend of Elizabeth's, Anne Choi, uh, who vended just around the corner from us. It was the first time meeting her. Uh, we had seen her on Instagram and her wonderful things. And she is a, another person kind of like us who keeps live animals, has some sheep, um, but also mm -hmm. does some knitting and some yarn, etc. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yep. And she mentioned that she's going to be teaching at the Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival this fall. Um, and that's going to be overlapping with our fall tour as well. So if you want an extended vacation that includes the festival, you can check that out. Um, but uh, she mentioned that she was um, she's from New Jersey, 
and was coming up to the festival and we just said, well, do you need a place to stay? Because there's really very limited options. There's no big hotels around here um, if you're going to that festival. So uh, she said, oh, really? <laughs> I can stay with you? <laughs> So that's yeah. what I, I love the camaraderie of these the groups of people here in right. the fiber community. They just we opened our doors to a number of people for different events, whether it's the Sheep and Wool Festival or, or the Tunbridge World's Fair. Uh, we like to have people come in. We like meeting people. And it was really great to meet Anne and welcome. We'll be able to welcome her uh, this fall. And again, as Sarah said, we do have the fiber tour this fall, which will culminate final day at the Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival in beautiful Tunbridge, Vermont. Mm hmm. Um, so we met Anne, and I got to pose again with Sam Barsky, um, who's become a world-famous knitter for his improvised uh, intarsia sweaters of various locations and uh, famous events and monuments. Um, so if you don't know Sam, I will definitely link to the New York Times article on him, um, but he's kind of known on the internet as the knitting guy. And I did actually get to meet him briefly last year, um, but unfortunately the friend who took the photo kind of got a bad angle on both of us. So um, we, we retook that this year, thanks to Rick, uh, and got a nice nice picture with Sam. Um, and I actually got to chat with him a little bit. I was just going uh, to say, time. it was, yeah. it was uh, last year you were qu quite busy and he just happened to visit right at about a time. It was a nice natural pause uh, in mm -hmm. the flow of people coming through. We had been really busy. Well, we slowed down a bit. I took a quick break. It's when I come back, Sarah and Sam are, are chatting, and I knew I was supposed to be there for the photo. So I was <laughs> glad I got back in the, an amount of time, and it was great to, to speak with Sam. Uh, and he had a very creative Maryland Sheep and Wool uh, uh, sweater on as well. But to go to his Instagram feed to get the full effect of the talent that he brings and the creativity with his sweaters. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um... Yeah, so that was a lot of fun. And I also got to meet Casey, um, the dancing yarn shop owner. Uh, hi, Casey. Uh, Casey's from uh, Port Fiber up in Portland, Maine. And she runs a small yarn shop there. And she also does a lot with a women's cooperative importing um, cashmere yarns into the country. Um, and again, it was just nice, you know, you make all these Instagram friends or you meet people and admire their work um, from afar. And so it was really nice to uh, connect with Casey and meet her in person too. She was helping, she was there, I think, helping out another uh, another booth, yeah. Right, and it was nice to meet her. I was unaware of who she was until Sarah reminded me that she was the dancing knitter type of thing. And I remembered her Instagram videos and they really kind of speak true to that whole dance like nobody else is watching. And she does, and I just mm -hmm. love the free spirit, the nature of that, it's a yeah. lot of fun. She's yeah. great. She is great. Um, I know that she was having a fundraiser for her, for this cashmere yarn cooperative that she's um, helping to support. And one of the fundraising, um, you know, goals or gifts was if you donate so much money, I'll do a personal dance to any song you choose. <laughs> that was a good one because <laughs> people have sort of come to know her for that now. Uh, yeah, that was fun. Um, <laughs> other highlights, we got to see some friends, some personal friends, yeah. non-knitting friends. Yeah. yeah, It was nice to see some of our Maryland folks. Uh, if you don't recall, uh, Sarah and I met while we were living in the D.C. Maryland area, mm -hmm. and we don't get a chance to get back down there as often as we would like. Taking care of the farm can be challenging. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was kind of nice to, to get down there in addition to be able to see some of our yarny friends, to see some of our friends from uh, back when we lived in Maryland. And we really appreciated them coming by with their kids and with their families to uh, look at the, the booth. It was great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. Yeah. And what about you also got to see and spend some time with Jill? Oh, yeah. Jill Draper. Um and uh, whose, whose work I've been um, talking about on the show before. I'm still knitting that big red sweater, um, but I'm getting near the end, so I'll, I'll follow up with that in another video coming up. Um, but Jill Draper uh, Makes Stuff is her business name, and she's in upstate New York, uh, actually near Rhinebeck, near where the big uh, festival happens every fall. Um, and she hand, she handcrafts all of her yarn. She chooses all the fleeces. She designs the yarn with the mills. And then she hand dyes all of it. And actually, I uh, treated myself um, to a little bit of Jill's. This is her newest yarn. Um, and it's a heathery kind of tweedy effect. Um, and I decided, um, I just bought one skein because I wanted to try it out. But I decided to try a hat with it. So I'm about half, halfway through the hat. Um, it just has this little, it almost looks like a cable, but it's a faux cable. Um, these little ridges. Uh, I'm not actually cabling anything, it's just increases and decreases that make that textured pattern. And this is the Irma hat um, by Anita 
Mm, I'm not going to try to pronounce her name by Anita. Um, I'll link to it in the show notes. And uh, it's a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, so that was a good one. Yeah, I really like her yarns. I'm also lucky enough that uh, apparently there is uh, a sweater in my future mm -hmm. <laughs> um, using some of the uh, Jill Draper make stuff yarn. And I'm really excited about I wouldn't I wasn't even sure if that was the correct term, but I was going to say it has a very heathered kind of look to it. I like that kind of muted tones mm -hmm. with almost little bits of gray in it. I just think that yeah. is like comfort. <laughs> that is comfort. It is. It's like the oatmeal, you know, or the porridge of knitting. It's like, uh, it's just lovely. And this is, I mean, you can't tell texture on the camera, but this is like nice and squishy and bouncy. I'm thinking there's got to be some gray fleeces mixed in with this to give it that depth of color um yeah the yarn i bought for you we'll talk more about that in a future episode but it's a um new york uh cheviot uh yarn and it's almost like icelandic it's a little hairy um but it's nice and strong and i think it's going to make a really nice sweater for you. i'm excited i'm excited about that so. yeah so we'll sh we'll share more about that uh again in another episode yeah so but I was pretty good, um, and I did not buy any sock yarn this year, which was like what I told Rick. I said, don't let me buy any sock yarn. He said, honey, you know I can't say no to you. You have to put that on yourself. <laughs> I said, okay, well, I'm not going to buy any sock yarn. I didn't, so. <laughs> that, and I can't really tell the difference between sock yarn and other yarn. <laughs> so, said, what are you using that for? It's a sock. Okay, you're not allowed to have that. Oh, I'm going to make a sweater. Okay. <laughs> so, okay, sure. <laughs> I, it's the honor system, and I trust that she, <laughs> that she was true to her. I stuck to my goal. I stuck to my goal. That was good. Um, and then we were also giving away some stuff. Oh, yeah. I tried. Um, we were giving away some hand lotion, cream, chapstick things uh, that yeah. were really well received. So um, so this is a new product. I've been sort of hinting about it if you follow our Instagram feed. Um, but this is a new product. It's a little lotion bar sample. It's a solid lotion. I'll show you what that looks like, or you can hold it up. Yeah, I was going to show you if you can and, see And uh, Rick, you've been enjoying that. I have. I'm actually not a big fan of most creams and lotions. I uh, I only use it as when I need to. Mm -hmm. um, and during the winter around here, I really do need to. Uh, but mostly, I just end up putting on some other local products if I could. Mm -hmm. But I've never been a real fan of most, and they always end up being too greasy. This is wonderful. I just put it over my knuckles. I like the ability to kind of roll it on. Mm -hmm. I don't need to put it on my fingertips and then find them greasy. If I didn't even know this stuff isn't greasy, I can just roll it on, roll it on, yeah. without then going, and now my fingers are all slippery or greasy or lotion-y. This, this really just soaks up really, really well. Yeah, it soaks in pretty good. Um, so I've been playing around with a couple of um, different recipes, and we debuted them at the festival just to give people um, an idea of what they're going to be and also to get some feedback. So if you got a free sample, um, I am going to be sending out that email um, sometime this week uh, with a little survey, and I'd appreciate you know, 60 seconds of your time to, to let us know what you thought of it. Um, I do actually have a few of these left. So if you would like one, leave us a comment and then I'll figure out a way to get one to you. Um, for our local fans and uh, friends, just uh, drop us an email. Yeah. I'll probably see you around town. <laughs> exactly. I'll bring some to trivia night next to next week. <laughs> or um, knitting night. Yeah. Knitting night. Or yep. spinning night. <laughs> Any other events? Oh, I can't think Beer of night. Beer night. Beer night. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, so they're, but they're locally uh, sourced ingredients as well. Um, so uh, tallow or lard from local grass-fed animals, and then some kind of local oil and local beeswax as well. So um, really trying to look at that local food um, thing, looking at local textiles like Jill Draper's yarn or our own yarn from our own animals, and then, you know, extending that to skincare. It's all kind of under that local, locally made umbrella. Um, yeah. We're trying to do that. And and hopefully, if um, there's enough interest, we'll be rolling these out um, as an offered product later this year. So that's the, that's the goal. Yeah, so. but we expect to hear back from you as mm -hmm. far as the surveys are concerned. Tell us what you like. Can't imagine there's anything you don't like, but uh, we do want to hear both positive and negative in case uh, we can improve upon the product for you. Yep, exactly. Um, yeah, so any other observations about Maryland it's so it's so fun and it's so overwhelming um but we always enjoy it and uh it's obviously not something I feel like I could do every week um do a huge craft fair like that but it's it's good uh once yeah. a year to kind of get stoked about it and and um and like I said get to meet people face to face that you you only 
really good to email with or, or see on Instagram. Yeah. yeah. Well, you and I, we like to do a road trip. This is probably That's right true. at the edge of what our limits are for road trip, especially for a four day trip, mm -hmm. but it's always a great deal of fun. We travel well together. Sarah gets a lot of podcast and music lined up and snacks and drinks. And then I do my part by over planning the map and deciding, well, this is a, probably about how long I can go before we'll need to stop for gas or need to stop for a restroom or need mm -hmm. to stop for lunch. But we ended up picking a good place for lunch in Morristown, New Jersey, the Morristown mm -hmm. Diner. And that was a lot of fun. That uh, good was on people the way down. on the way yeah. down. And on the way back, we stumbled upon a uh, really nice little cafe, that, uh, mm -hmm. not a sponsor. We just really enjoyed them. And that was the Clear Plate Kitchen in Clinton, Maryland. Yeah, the Clean Plate, I think. Yeah. Oh, you're, I'm sorry. I, I, I confounded that with the Clear River Inn, which is local. My apologies. Oh, right. No, yeah. The Clean Plate, um, which was a total surprise. And it's like farm to table dining and whatever. But it was not. Um, a lot of the farm to table around here in Vermont is nice but I would consider them upscale restaurants and the the price you know reflects that um, this was actually really affordable you know salads and sandwiches um, so it was nice to see kind of a faster food <laughs> um, option for for that kind of dining it was really nice and we got to sit out by the river yeah beautiful setting there were some falls there and a lovely little bridge and there were anglers in the river doing some fly fishing we saw turtles we saw geese we saw swans uh, we had ducks who came by and just sat down and fell asleep right at our feet while we were having our lunch. So mm -hmm. it, was, it was a nice experience. Uh, um, it's a challenge to get off in, uh, unexpectedly on an exit and know what you're going to find, which is why I have a tendency to overplan these things because I don't, especially with a big van, want to be trying mm -hmm. to negotiate. And honestly, Clean Plate Kitchen was a challenge because it wanted to take us over this bridge, and I wasn't sure whether that was a pedestrian bridge or a car bridge. Yeah. But it all worked out, and we had a lovely time. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, so probably something if we, when we go next year, we would want to stop by um, one way or another because they yeah, great yeah. attentive staff, really good local foods. Yep, yep, exactly. Cool. Um, well, that's all our recommendations. Uh, as usual, you can find all of our notes and links to all the farmers and dye people um, that we mentioned in the show notes. Um, thanks again for joining us. Yeah, until next time, have a great day and enjoy your spring wherever it may be.